What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space, and we're back in my survival world again with... I don't know, it's kind of an adaption on what I did with the cable car, in that it's using a very similar technique to the cable car, but there's a few bits of it that operate a little bit differently. So if I have a bit of a look around, as you can see, we are actually sitting in a tunnel at the moment. So it was the first sort of noticeable change I made, and that was primarily because the rail system that I was using before wasn't really stable enough to be running constantly automatically and that's the main deal with this one so as we hopefully approach the station I've managed to choose the one seat where you can't see forwards um, this basically let me jump out and show you what's going on I've not completely built it intentionally so that I could sort of show you around the workings and exactly how I've got this functional because what this will do now uh, okay, I've, I've misaligned that sensor. In, in reality, that obviously the yellow bit should line up with the, the exit bay. It does at the other end. Uh, I forgot that this end has got a few extra blocks, so perfect time. As you can see at the moment, it's literally just sitting here waiting at this station. So let's jump in the sensor. The first thing I can do is uh, front extent. We'll put that up a bit. So what I've got is two sensors in here, a forward sensor and a reverse sensor, one on either side, and they are each tied to two timer blocks. Uh, and what's happening is, as it comes in to the station, the forward sensor is detecting the end of the track uh, with 20 meters on this one, which I've just changed obviously, and the other one is running at 10 meters. As soon as that happens, it activates one of two blocks. So we have a forward sensor response and a rear sensor response. And what these do is stop the forward motion, which enables the inertia, which allows the inertial dampers to stop us and start another timer, which very simply takes 10 minutes, uh, takes 10 minutes, takes one minute, and then, as we can see here, the platform will leave the station and head back the other way. And that's basically what it does. Uh, if I just show you a little of the workings around here, um, I made a big mistake making this, uh, in that I decided I was gonna make it out of heavy armor, so it was nice and durable, and if I made any mistakes, it was still gonna be intact, and I wasn't gonna have to rebuild from scratch. What that therefore meant was that it's really, really, really heavy. And because it's so heavy, I have to use large thrusters on it. So we've basically got a very similar setup to before, and I'll try and switch to some footage of me actually aligning this in the corridor. But basically, it had it more engines on it than it had now. I aligned it into the corridor, and then I activated the pistons with the wheels. And we, on, this, on this version, we've got pistons with wheels on every side, and there's four on every side, so that it's really well balanced doesn't go particularly fast but what it does do is just cycle its way back and forth down this uh, tube here which goes from my cable car station down to the asteroid that we are currently mining on uh, needed to sort of finish off and hopefully at this end everything will line up neatly basically the sensor here is going to activate in a second it's going to see the end it's going to turn off the engines the inertia dampers kick in and the whole thing comes to a halt nice and fast and yay at this end it's all lined up neatly, so I can just walk on and off. Come on, take my seat. And as I said, this will sit here for a minute at this platform, and then it'll move on. Uh, you can't really do multiple stations with it. The, uh, the reason for that being you can put the logic in for it to continue on after waiting for a minute. But then what? how can you sort of create this setup where it stops itself at the very end and starts coming backwards? So there's, there's a limit to this technology, but uh, I think it works quite nicely for what it is. So here you go, you can see uh, after much welding, this is what it looks like from the outside. Um, doesn't need the holes in the side, I just thought it looked kind of cool and you can obviously sit and watch the little carriage go back up and down. I would certainly dress it up and make it look a bit more pretty if I was to continue this design and I, I'm going to. This is sort of the early stages. The reason I went from this sort of setup where you've got a single pole and it's running along that to this setup, off, go, off it goes again, uh, is uh, so that I can make it turn. Now, not, I, I'm not gonna be able to make it turn corners. Unfortunately, that just doesn't seem to be doable. Um, the sizes of blocks change in Space Engineers depending on whether they're on a diagonal. So these diagonal blocks, you put two of those together to create a diagonal line, that is not as thick as a single full square block, unfortunately. So you, turning corners is really difficult. What I'm intending on doing, though, is making a changing station. And I've kind of got that start, started to be built, but it's not quite ready yet. So we'll have a look. This is just as it stands for the time being. Nice little automated tube system, and you could integrate these quite easily, I think, into pretty much anywhere. They don't take up that much room. They're, um, obviously, I've built quite a big one here. You can make them a lot smaller than this if you wanted to. This is, I don't know, you could almost move vehicles on this one, I imagine. 
So yeah, the, main, the main gists to this really are you want to make it obviously so it, it only just fits inside the hole you're using. So with the wheels on the side, it, this only just fits in as it is. It's very difficult to move it in here and get it in here straight. And that way when you apply the pistons, you don't have to make them go very far, but they really push against the walls. And aside from that, it's still the case, I did try with this one as well, that you're better off using thrusters than you are trying to use wheels and power it using the wheels. And that's simply because when you go into this sensor, um, you can add an action. Uh, it's, in fact, it's not the sensor, it's the timer block, isn't it? But when you go into the, the blocks, you can add an action in here that controls the thrusters. What you can't do, if I drag this down, there's nothing there that enables me to actually make it drive and make it go forwards. And because of that, you have to use thrusters for anything that's going to be automated. Oh, hello, we're being pushed along. Anyway, hope you found this interesting. It's a pretty simple technique to get something automated that's going back and forth. And then you could use this for cargo or pretty much anything you wanted. Um, my main thought was just personnel transport, getting to and from our main base to the mining rig. So you can now take the cable car and then take the... Uh, the tube and get the entire way to your place of work. So thanks for watching guys, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you found this useful, interesting, helpful in any way, please hit that like button, it really helps me and the channel out. Even consider hitting the subscribe button, that definitely helps me out. And if you've got any ideas, any thoughts, any comments, hit me up down below, I'd really like to hear them. So thanks for watching guys and I will catch you next time.